extendos. So there's some things in ham radio technology that, you know, I, I haven't really fully tested. Extendable antennas, these telescopic antennas are, are one such thing. And I realized that after talking to, uh, to Adam, K6ARK, that I might be missing the boat on this. This is the Long Ranger by MFJ. This is the two meter only version. It's one of Adam's favorite antennas for HDs that he uses when he goes on soda summits. He takes that with him. And that's what he uses when he's out there. And I thought, great, you know, I was at Hamcation and I picked one of these up. But then I got back from Hamcation, went by HRO, and it turns out that there's multiple versions of these extendos, these extendable antennas. So we're gonna talk about the MFJ, we're gonna do a little bit of testing, and then we're also gonna put these Smiley Antenna Company brand antennas to the test as well. We're gonna do some practical tests and then we're gonna do a uh, signal to noise ratio test on the receive side here from the transmitter from, from this radio or a uh, radio. I've got three two meter primarily antennas here. This is a five eighths wave telescopic, which we'll talk about what that's all about a one half wave telescopic, and then a tri-band telescopic. This one's really cool. So depending on how far you pull the sections out, gives you a different type of antenna. So it can run two meter, one quarter wave, 445 eighths wave, 441 quarter wave, and 220 one quarter wave. Really cool, and it's just the difference between which sections you have pulled out that make it function that way. I was thinking about it, so, why can't, so this, this antenna, right, this antenna, he can do two meters through 220, I'm sorry, through uh, 440, right, two meters through 70 centimeters. Why can this do that, but these ones only do two meters? Can't you just leave them all the way extended and, and get that capability? Well, I started talking to the folks at HRO when I got these, and it's because of the coils. They're, these are coil matched antennas, right? They use this coil as, as part of the antenna. So this 5 8 boy here, He's got a really long uh, coil in addition to this telescopic bit that's already out there. If you fully pull this in, it's still too big for 70 centimeters. And the same goes for this guy. At least that's, that's my thinking behind it. Could be wrong. But yeah, you, you can't close this all the way in and get close to 70 centimeters. In fact, we may test it. But as uh, some of you may or may not know, and I, I like to repeat it when I can, using an analyzer with antennas like these, doesn't really get you what you're looking for because this ground plane off of this is not great. And while I can pop a wire off of it, I don't know the testing rig that they used when they built these antennas because they're claiming a one to three SWR, one to three, one to three, and one to three SWR on these. Well, that has some kind of testing rig matching an analyzer that has some kind of ground plane attached to it. And I likely can't duplicate that here in my shack because I don't know the measurements of it. I'll do a test with my software defined radio to show what the transmitted single to noise ratio is received on my end. If I go away from the house a couple miles or so, these will each give different strengths of signal to noise ratio and that will help us determine which one's better. So let's get started. Something worth mentioning, Smiley sells their antennas and you, and you can get them into, ooh, oh. Oh, that's flexy, oh. These adapters that they have come on two of these antennas here, and you can see it's got a, a small little recessed hole for this adapter, which is this black grommeted side to a pin in the middle. And they actually sell these adapters that have BNC as well as SMA. This one is SMA. The tri-band is also SMA, and this comes off. And then you've got the type that are just, these are just fixed. Uh, this is SMA male here. So you, you just need to look for the one um, that, that kind of matches what you're doing as far as what you want to connect to. Right now I have an SMA connector on this Kenwood and so it'll match all these antennas but if for some reason I had a BNC on here then I would need to go get the little adapters to make them work and that's highly recommended. You know I made a video on that where I talked about BNC connectors on antennas particularly HTs. Always a nice thing. Really protects the connectors if you want to swap things out like I often do. Let's put a little bit more meat on the bone there regarding taking an antenna analyzer and connecting it to one of these antennas. This one is the 5 8 wave, and this is the uh, tri-bander, which will do like quarter wave, half wave, I believe in some cases, and 5 8 wave. These don't really show up well on antenna analyzers because they generally require a counterpoise, the other side of the antenna, if you will, and that would like require a wire off the side of your analyzer, etc. 
On the flip side, however, the two half-wave antennas, we can put these on the antenna analyzer and take a look at them because they're half-wave. It's the whole antenna, basically. You can almost think of this as like a end-fed half-wave antenna, right? You can just put that up in the air and attach an analyzer to it and get a model. Now, comparing these two together, we can see that the match is more better, <laughs> more better on the Smiley than it is on the MFJ. What will that show when we get out in the field and we actually put some RF through these? I'm interested to find out. And if you'd like to learn more about antennas, balanced circuits, or just circuitry in general in regards to electrical engineering, then consider our sponsor this month, Skillshare. Skillshare offers a convenient way to find knowledge that you are looking for, maybe beyond that of the detail that goes into most YouTube videos. The class that I'm taking right now has over 60 different classes on electrical engineering principles and circuitry design, and it is taught by Ahmed Mahdi, who is an electrical engineer. For me, I can often go and find any one particular solution to a problem that I want to understand, try and get better mental control over it. I find Skillshare is really handy because it just has a ton of classes that you can start with one and at your own pace, work through the whole back catalog. The first 1,000 people to click the custom link in the description will get one month free from Skillshare. Thanks so much. Just because I don't want to leave you hanging, the Smiley 5 8 the, the Super Stick 2, is 10 inches when collapsed and 48 inches when fully elongated. And note the smileys, a lot of them anyway, and the link will be in the description, can do PL259, SMA female, SMA female Motorola, SMA female Vertex, and SMA male. I'm reading off their website. Now the tri-band, this one, bear with me, reduced size is 4.5 inches, nice size. The extended is 16.5. All right, the half wave flexi has a length of eight inches when collapsed, 36 inches when all the way up. And that also has the mini connector options to fit whatever your needs are. So I'm gonna be doing a test back to my house running an RSP1A. We're gonna be using the stock antenna as a control. Let's work through all these on two meters and then we'll have a little bit of fun with some local repeaters. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, doing a radio test, radio test. Okay, there is the stock antenna. We'll go to the MFJ Lone Ranger. Or sorry, Long Ranger. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, radio test with the Long Ranger, radio test. Now what I also want to do is make sure that I get a test against low power. I don't know if the high power is going to be too strong that it kind of like overloads the front end of my receiver basically. So I'm going to do this again on low power, see if we get a different result on the receive side at my house. India 6 November Alpha Zulu doing an antenna test, long ranger at low power one. Okay, so now we can swap this guy out. Okay, first smiley antenna. This is the big boy, the 5 8 wave. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu on the Smiley 5 8 at high power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. All right, let's do low power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu on the Smiley 5 8 at low power. Now I will note, since you're, you're watching me here, can you see this little gap? Yeah, there you go. The, uh, the smileys have this on all of them except for the flex bottom one, the one that actually flexes because it's built into the coil here at the bottom. There's a gap. I, I noticed that uh, it's on a lot of the radios. You could use a grommet to kind of shore up that gap. I think the idea is that you really aren't going to be running around like on your bag with one of these because you just go back to the stock antenna for close-in comms. This is for when you want to reach out a little bit further. At least that's my understanding of it. So we're going straight to the smiley. This is the half wave antenna on two meters. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu on the smiley half wave, the flex bit here. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. And low power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu on the smiley uh, one half wave at uh, low power. Low power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. 
Ooh. <laughs> this one, when you try and push it, you know, it's, it's going to bobble around a little bit. I'm actually thinking of all of these that this is the one that I would most likely take because you still get that gap, a little bit less, but of the, the flex nature of this. I, I like that. Anyway, let's, let's try the last one. This is the tiny one. This is the tri-bander. Don't expect a lot from this one, but we'll see. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu on the Smiley Tri-Bander, the Smiley Tri-Bander. And we'll do it again at low power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu on the Smiley Tri-Bander at low power, low power. When looking at the results, the MFJ was the clear winner with the Smiley one half wave right behind it. The one half wave I really like because if you flip the numbers around here, the low power, the one half wavelength Smiley actually came out on top with the MFJ right behind it. I think both those antennas are the clear winners here. They all did pretty well though, pretty surprised. I will note though, you can see, you see that screen? People ask me what the uh, ID52 looks like in sunlight. Looks great. It looks really good. Uh, the screen is a little bit washed out, but I believe that has to do more with the type of screen this is. These are polarized lenses that I'm looking at, and it, it doesn't really affect uh, the screen at all when I'm on this. And you can see that that band scope is pretty cool, all right? Pretty nice. Anyway, <laughs> what we're going to do now, I brought the ID52 out here on purpose. I'm going to try and uh, key up some of the far off repeaters. I'm gonna, I've got a pretty good open space around me where I can I can take some, you know, uh, attempt to make some contacts uh, a little bit further out, see if I can hit a repeater. So I'm going to test out the stock antenna here. Let's go ahead and go into DR mode and we're going to go near repeater all. Serving all of Anaheim. I'd like to find a repeater I can't hit with the stock antenna and then test all of these and make sure they can all hit. It'd be nice if we had a, a differences. This is the Disneyland repeater. So let's find another one. Oh, I was so smart. I brought my dead cat. Now he cleared out that noise, hopefully a little bit. Hopefully that wind noise is gone. All right, let's find a, one a little bit further out from the Disneyland that I can't hit. I'm sure I can hit Santiago, 31 miles away. Yeah, I'm, I'm picking. Okay, Rob. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, talking to you on my uh, 51. Okay, Anaheim Hills. Almost full quiet in Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu monitoring. No, that was that was. I need a further out repeater than this, I guess. When you come outside, repeaters out here are really easy to hit because you can literally see. You know, the Santiago is, is right over here behind me, so probably doing okay to get there. I am on the WB6RIC uh, D-Star repeater. The stock antenna could not make it. This repeater is 39.5, sorry, 39.5 miles that away in Wrightwood. So we're literally reaching to the top of a summit to be able to hit it, and I can hit it just fine with the Long Ranger. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Okay, we made it. Um, what I wanna do is, so I don't lose any of this, I'm gonna bring out my laptop and record all this information and how far we got um, using these different antennas because we may get a different result, so hold on. All right, so the MFJ didn't have any problem. Stock antenna couldn't hit the repeater. Let's see if the 5.8s can do it. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, yep, and uh, full, full quieting on the repeater too. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that all of these antennas are two meter only. So this is something you might want to use if you're doing a soda activation, uh, something where you're trying to go light and you live in an area like Southern California where simplex is possible, or possibly even um, satellite contacts. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. And yep, that was uh, not a problem for this as well. I got the little tone back. See that little burst there? All right, this one, I know it's going to perform better than stock, but I don't know how much better. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Oh no. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. It didn't do it. No, no go. So that was a, a no on the tribander. Interesting. And let's, you know, for comparison's sake, here's the, the length of the tribander, right? I'm looking at it compared to the stock antenna found a repeater that's even more further out. Uh, this is the KI6WZX repeater. It is 62 miles away from my location right now. And keying up here with the Long Ranger. A 
made it. <laughs> Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu monitoring. So that's pretty good. So this could be the uh, this could be the deciding factor we'll see here. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I didn't uh, I, I kind of expected that they'd all perform really well, but it looks like that's not true. So here we go. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Full quieting on this one too. So the Long Ranger and the uh, 5 8 wave seems pretty good. This is a beefy boy too. This is like what you'd throw on like a, a whip for like a QRP HF radio. All right, so here's the half wave flexi jobber. Kilo India 6, November off of Zulu. Not a problem. Also full quieting. That's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. Now some of this we're being helped out by the elevation of the repeater, right? So, you know, keep that in mind too. All right, last one, Tribander. Kilo India 6, November off of Zulu. Oh, okay. Uh, this did that. So it looks like the W the WB6 RIC repeater, which is 39.5 miles away, maybe just uh, not the best orientation with this antenna. I don't know, but the 5 eighths and the half wave did really well. This is probably a quarter wave antenna on two meters. So some of that is going to affect how this works. And for those of you that don't know, half wave, 5 eighths, and one quarter wavelength are going to affect the takeoff angle or the way the RF comes away from the radio. Often people say if you want a really good repeater antenna, that you should go with a 5 eighths wave antenna for working on repeaters. Simple results here, even at the furthest repeater out 62 miles away all of them made it in including the tribander on the wb6 ric repeater at 39.5 miles the tribander didn't make it in which i kind of view as an anomaly um, also the tribander is a little bit lighter on the receive not that bad but could not get full quieting on that courtesy tone on most of the repeaters i was playing around with i'm on top of 20 and i think it may be having some challenges but anyway thanks again you did a great job and uh, enjoyed it thoroughly have a great day. Be safe. K2 Echo Victor Charlie. Off the tribander. Let's go to the 5 8s. Uh, I know. It's, uh, it's been kind of rough. I mean, I think when pretty much all you get on the news is stories about what's going on in the train, it's kind of hard on everybody's sight. Is that the famous camo that I heard in the background? Ooh. That was uh, two of Camo's neighbors up the street. Uh, Camo's generally pretty fun. I mean, if someone's around my front door, he'll start barking. But, you know, he, he's, he's pretty chill. That's pretty good. The half wave was pretty good for this repeater. Let's get that MFJ on there and see if we can get the salutations before he's gone. Come on. KJ6, CDA, KN6, APO, are you out there? Wow. The MFJ. I'm gonna have to look at that on the editing, um, but I'm keeping an eye on the S meter right here. This S meter. And what we're that's we're basically doing a receiver test right now, so I want to see the antenna that has the strongest uh, signal, right? That would be the one you want. Transmitting is very important, but you also need a good receiver as well. The MFJ may be the number one. I'll, I'll annotate in the bottom here which one I think is uh, the highest. You tell me in the chat because when you're into a repeater like this, you're, you're generally getting the signal strength off of the repeater. It's not necessarily the station that's transmitting. So if you keep an eye on the power meter there, that's what I'm looking at. But it looks like they may be gone. Oh well, you tell me in the comments which one you think was better. Since I'm here, I've got this really cheap hand mic. It was a, it's a clone of the ICOMs because the ICOMs are actually not available right now for the uh, 52. And I got this, I don't remember where I got this. Let me go back to my memory mode here. So this is back to my antenna at my home. I wanna hear what I sound like if it's a little bit different. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is a mic test, mic test with the ICOM ID52 into a Third party microphone. Audio test, audio test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, doing a radio test, radio test. All right, so what are my thoughts on these antennas? Uh, they're different. <laughs> so the, the Long Ranger, the 5 8 wave 
and the one half wave are all kind of the same. The MFJ does not say whether it's 5 eighths or a 1 half, but considering that the length of this, the fully extended length, is similar to the 5 eighths, but not as long, I'm assuming it's closer to a 5 eighths. The flexi-tipped one at half wave um, was kind of my favorite. I kind of like this one a lot. Um, I feel like even though there's a bit of a gap here and you can add a grommet, I like the flexible nature of this one. I don't know why. It's also a bit smaller of all three. It's, it sits a bit more packable right there in, the, uh, in your pack or however you're going to store it. This one was probably going to get the nod from me because it's not much bigger than a large oversized ink pen. The thing I don't like about these with the smileys is these removable uh, adapters. They could have went deeper with these so that it sits a little bit more flush. I appreciate that if I want to, and in fact I'm probably going to do this, I'm going to go to HRO and I'm going to get their BNC adapters for this. I should have bought them. I don't know why I did it. Did not. This also means that with the BNC connector, I'll be able to run this with my 705, however I want to run it that way. The 5.8 is also a bit flexy, but I don't know that that's on purpose. And the MFJ seems solid enough. It feels kind of like a, a shrunk down mobile antenna. Now the unique one in the bunch is the tri-bander. This being a, an adjustable antenna and how you adjust it for different bands as you literally go in and just drop some of the segments down until it's a bit smaller. Now it just so happens that I have the radio that is going to live with this antenna, my Kenwood THF6. This is a tri-band radio. So now I have a good, eh, you know, adjustable 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and 1.25 meter antenna. All right, so every one of these antennas, except for the flexible smiley, every one of these runs about 25.95. The flexi one, the one half wavelength, is 32.95. Why that is, I don't know. Uh, but it's also the one that doesn't have the replaceable adapter that the other smileys have. So keep that in mind if you're considering picking them up. Links will be in the description. I bought all of the smiley antennas, but MFJ did give me this. It kind of slid this into my pack when I was in Hamcation because I was asking questions about what they had in that space. And they're like, here, just, just check it out and let us know what you think. So thank you, MFJ. Uh, thank you, HRO, as always, for being my go-to location because it's right down the street from me. It makes it really easy for me to just go in there and go like, hey guys, what do you have in a telescopic antenna? And if I can take a moment, if you can, any ham radio store that is available to you, if you can get down there, if you're curious about what radios you should get or consider, please go check them out. Please ask for their help. They're, they're there for a reason. They want to help you make a decision. And if you aren't close to one, well, just post your comment below and I'll try to help you the best I can. Thanks so much for watching. If this was helpful to you and you don't mind the wind noise that I may be having right now, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I will talk to you again soon. See ya. All right, I'm all done here. Let's normalize some ham radio by walking out with my ham radio on my body. Right there. Ooh. That's what you can do. Think about how you can help ham radio. Wear your, uh, wear your HT. Packing up from the video, I got my egg bag. That guy goes in there and lives. My THF6, one of my favorite HTs. And then you just take all the antennas, throw them in the bag. <laughs> I hope this sounds good. I can't wait to hear it. And my Surface Go, which uh, I haven't talked about yet. I'll be doing a video on this soon. I don't like the, the one USB-C. I gotta tell you, I've uh, now twice went to go do a video today. Actually, while I was here, I wanted to try and do Vara FM, but I forgot my USB-C to USB-C cable for my Digilink or my Digirig. So now I've gotta remember to put that in the bag so I don't forget it ever again. And yes, I went with red, of course.